Hello everyone. Based on questions I heard in the small group discussions this week, I decided to make a video describing in more detail the Excel file I posted on Canvas, used in the last part of episode C5 to calculate the TX diagram for methanol hexane mixtures, aka the Pikachu diagram. In episode C5, I explained the equilibrium equations being solved, but not how they were implemented in Excel. So my goal here is to describe the actual formulas that appear in the columns of the spreadsheet, what objective function I'm using with Solver, and how I set up the spreadsheet to solve all the compositions simultaneously. So first, a bit about the formulas appearing in the spreadsheet. Starting with the liquid-liquid equilibrium, episode C5 describes the process of expressing the chemical potentials of methanol and hexane in the two liquid mixtures, alpha and beta, as a function of composition. Requiring the chemical potentials of each component to be the same in each phase leads to the following two equations in two unknowns for Xa alpha and Xa beta, where Xa is the mole fraction of methanol. Note that to avoid confusion in the spreadsheet, methanol and hexane are labeled as components 1 and 2, respectively, rather than A and B, since little a and little b are used for phases alpha and beta. If we take the first of these two equilibrium relationships and take the exponential of both sides, we get a ratio of the mole fractions of methanol in each phase, which is equal to the ratio of two exponential terms, which are functions of Xa alpha and Xa beta. For simplicity, let's define these two functions as gamma A beta and gamma A alpha. As you'll learn more about in Chemie 326, these terms are called activity coefficients of methanol in the two liquid phases but we don't need to delve into that right now. For our purposes here, it's just a convenient way of organizing our spreadsheet. Repeating for the second equilibrium relationship, we can also define a gamma B beta and a gamma B alpha for hexane in the two phases. Rearranging the two equilibrium expressions, we find that the product of gamma times the mole fraction of each species, also known as the activity of that species, must be the same in both phases at equilibrium. Thus, the difference in activity between the two phases must be zero. This provides a useful objective function we can use with solver. Basically, we can adjust the mole fractions iteratively until this objective function is driven to zero. Similarly, episode C5 describes a similar set of equations for gas-liquid equilibrium between gas and liquid phase alpha. Adding these together, and again substituting the definition of gamma, we find the total pressure is a function of the mole fraction in the liquid. This provides another objective function we can use, adjusting the mole fraction of methanol in the liquid until the total pressure matches the actual pressure, in this case, 0.5 atmospheres. We can then repeat for phase beta. So here's the spreadsheet I used to implement this strategy, which is posted on Canvas in case you want a closer look or to play around with it yourself. At the top is a data block containing the Antoine parameters. These values are used in cell formulas below to calculate the saturation pressure of methanol and hexane at various temperatures. There are also cells containing the value of the Margulis parameter and the total pressure, in case we want to change that too. On the right is a plot of Xa, labeled as X1 in the spreadsheet, the mole fraction of methanol in the gas and in the two liquid phases, versus temperature. You can see it's all messed up right now because I just have guess values. The three points we know already are the boiling points of the two pure liquids. We also know the temperature of the heteroazeotrope, 32.8 degrees C. These points set the limit of the temperatures we want to examine in our calculation. Since PSAT is a strong nonlinear function of temperature, it's convenient to take T as our independent variable for this problem. Starting with the liquid-liquid equilibrium, we begin with a column of temperatures spanning 15 degrees C, the lower limit of the data in the phase diagram, to the heteroazeotrope at 32.8 degrees C. The number and spacing of the points is somewhat arbitrary. We basically need enough points to have a smooth graph without bogging down solver. We then have two columns of guess values for Xa in the two liquid phases, which I've marked in bright green and blue to remind us that these are the cells we're going to adjust iteratively with solver. The next four columns contain gamma for each species in the two phases, which are functions of the mole fractions, temperature, and the Margulis parameter. Finally, we have the difference in activity of methanol, component one, and hexane, component two, between the two phases. These are the objective functions for each temperature we need to drive to zero. 
but we want to do this efficiently. So we can do a couple of tricks. First, Solver tends to do better with minimization than root finding. So instead of finding where the objective function crosses zero, we can take the square of this objective function, which is always positive, and minimize it. This also allows us to define a global objective that is the sum of the squares at each point, shown here in red. By minimizing the sum of squares, we can simultaneously solve for all points at once, instead of doing each one one by one. Opening Solver, we specify the sum of squares as the objective we want to drive to zero by adjusting all the green and blue cells. Doing this a couple of times leads to convergence and a solution for liquid-liquid equilibrium below the heteroasiotrope. For gas-liquid equilibrium, we need to solve for both liquid phases, corresponding to Pikachu's two ears. Starting with the left ear, we must pick a range of temperatures between the heteroasiotrope and the boiling point of pure hexane. Then, other than pure hexane at its boiling point, which we know already, we guess values of the mole fraction of methanol in the liquid at each temperature in blue. Based on the temperature, we calculate the saturation pressure of hexane and methanol, and then, based on the guessed mole fraction, the value of gamma for both species in the liquid phase. We can then calculate the partial pressures of each species, and thus also the total pressure, as well as the mole fraction of methanol in the gas phase. This calculated total pressure must add up to the total pressure of 0.5 atmospheres, so we can define an objective function that is the square difference between the calculated and actual pressure. Again, summing over all the points gives us a single objective we can drive to zero by adjusting all the cells in blue. This gives us the VLE region for the hexane-rich liquid, beta. We can then repeat these steps for the methanol-rich liquid, alpha. Note that for the value of the Margulis parameter I've chosen here, 1000 Kelvin, the calculated VLE regions do not quite match up at their heteroasiotrope. So we have to adjust this value up and down by hand in this case, and repeat all the solver calculations until the saturated gas lines of both VLE regions meet at the same composition at the heteroasiotrope. We could do this automatically in a programming environment like Python or Mathematica, but Excel has the advantage that we can see all the inner workings of the calculation. Anyway, I hope this helps clarify and illustrate how to use Excel with Solver to iteratively solve coupled nonlinear equilibrium expressions for the phase boundaries on a TX diagram. This is something you'll see again in Chemi 326 in the context of fugacity, activity coefficients, and dew point calculations. <laughs>